Hello, welcome to this uh, session on the mini project that is planned for the operating systems and system software course as a part of the lab. Let this uh, lecture is going to give you some introduction about what this project is all about. And if you go through this videos, you should be able to do that work which is expected of this project. Now, briefly I will talk about the architecture, multi-core architecture, how does it look like and then what is CPU affinity. Later, after this, this first lecture will talk about only the top portion and then about multi-dimensional arrays and the project description will be in the second part of the discussion. Now let us first look at what is a multi-core multi architecture how does it look like? This is one simple four core processor. That means each of these core is an individual CPU. When I say individual CPU, you can imagine that it has its own PC and the entire register set, including the stack pointer and link register, R0, R1, what you know about ARM processor, entire thing is there and including the ALU and Everything that you can imagine within a CPU is there in a single core. Okay, that is this part of this CPU is entire thing. It's not only registers; it includes ALU and any multiplier, any other hardware. This is part of the CPU is there. That means each of the cores they can execute a, a single stream of instruction. That means each of them can execute a process or a thread. If you, you are, I'm already sure you know what is a process and what is a thread. In Linux, both process as well as threads are individual schedulable entities. That means if you give a CPU, if I have a CPU, I can put one process in it and it will execute in that. Or even I can schedule one thread also into a CPU. They are two independent, though there is a dependency of threads can live only within the process and they can access the data area and code area of the process. They are all there in terms of accessing the code and data which is far away in the memory. But thread as such can be scheduled in a core, in a CPU. That means I can have one thread running here and another thread running here. They may belong to the same process or different process. It depends on whether they are sharing which processes area while they are executing it. But each of the threads can be scheduled on individual cores. It is true with even the process because process is a main thread. I said you know, in the earlier discussion, process is a main thread and from where we are creating multiple child threads. So you can have either a process running, which means that it's a main thread which is running in a single core or a other threads which are created by this one single process could also be scheduled on multiple cores. Now, let me just give you why do we actually enable this to happen? What is the motivation for us to have a process creating multiple threads? Until otherwise or until they each of the threads can execute in parallel, there is no use of creating the threads. Now, how will they run in parallel? Unless there are multiple cores in a CPU, in a processor, I am not calling it as a CPU, in a processor, maybe I core 7 or I core 9, okay. If you don't have multiple cores, when I say core means it's equivalent to a CPU. If you don't have multiple CPUs, then if you have only a single CPU, then even if you create multiple threads, only one at a time will be running on the CPU, then there is no parallelism achieved. So all the recent processes have multiple cores only to get the maximum benefit out of multiple processes that could run on multiple cores simultaneously. Imagine each of the cores will be having their own clock and they execute independent of each other. Though there may be some dependency from the software perspective, but from the hardware perspective, they all run in parallel on individual cores. That is the reason why we want to create multiple threads. But the reason is, though it is good that we want these threads to run on multiple cores, 
you need to somehow make it happen otherwise os may os itself will try to do this by scheduling them on multiple cores when they have multiple cores in the processor but as a software developer if i have an you know uh, opportunity or a facility given by the os to say that okay i am creating a main process main thread from there i am creating t1 a thread child thread i am creating t2 another child thread and i am creating t3 a third thread now this main thread itself is one i call it as mt and then other th child threads are there suppose you have a, a, a processor which has got four cores as i shown here and if i have an opportunity to make a main thread i want it to run on core 1 t1 thread 1 i want it to only run on t core 2 t2 here and t3 here i can choose anything i am not that i need to choose it in this order but i have created multiple threads and i want to tell the os that please schedule them on these two four different cores now what is the motivation for you to do it imagine a system that you are running has only these processes in the system there are no other processes now os processes may be there i am not denying it but user processes you are creating it and you want them to run in parallel because all of them are very computationally intensive in that case they need more cpu time if if you are if all these threads that you have created are competing for the same cpu then only one one of your threads will be running on the cpu and then it will be pulled out and another thread will come though they are sharing the same core in that case you cannot get the parallelism and you cannot get the performance that you like but if they all run on the different cores you get the benefit because they are all running in parallel so i am going to discuss about the way you can actually mention which core uh, my thread should run on okay that's the motivation of this particular lecture all about now there are some um, cache mechanisms which is normally provided within the core you have the main memory which is here and then there is a system bus and the code or data or stack whatever you have it in the memory they all come to the cpu through these caches so suppose if you are having one data here it will be copied in this area and then it will also be here and it is here then goes to register now what is the use of having the multiple copies of the same data because the closer the memory which is a cache l1 cache to the cpu is faster to access suppose if whatever data that i want is available in l1 cache it will be accessed much faster and it will be able to do the memory operations faster whereas if it is not available in this cache it will come here if it is not here it will come and ask for the same thing here otherwise it has to go to the main memory but once it comes to the main memory a larger chunk of that will be brought here the larger chunk will be here much little smaller than it will be here and other other than even a much smaller portion of that will be kept here so that the locality of reference helps you in finding the data or a code that you are looking for is available in one of the caches so it is executed executed faster okay that's the reason of having multiple cache memories which are all hardware specific specific and they are all mostly sram based memory which are closer to the cpu so that is only to show you that this kind of uh, multiple levels of memories are available to make the core run faster now i spoke about i can choose a particular thread to run on a particular core that is called affinity cpu affinity i want a particular thread to be you know linked to a particular cpu so cpu 0 or core 0 okay this thread is affinity i am saying that this should be run on this core and some other thread should run on some other core that means they don't compete with each other each cpu and they can run in parallel now we may want to particular process or a thread to run on a specific processor or a range of processor i can also say that from core 0 to maybe core 2 you run it this process can whichever is free you run that run it on it run on them suppose core 3 to 7 suppose you have 60 core processor in that case you can choose the range of cores to be chosen for a particular process binding or linking with the 
or affinity a process or a threat to a specific set of processor is called processor affinity or cpu pinning you are pinning a process or a thread to a particular cpu you pin to it okay that means it's not that that process will always be in the cpu other processes also may be sharing the cpu only thing is whenever this process gets a chance to run it will be brought to the same cpu and it will run on the same cpu that means that cpu is more or less dedicated for this process okay it's like having a separate cabin for uh, vips and then one for uh, ladies and then one for general public so reserving them it actually makes it convenient for those people to actually get a chance to be part of the area right in a in a metro train or anywhere else so similarly here what we are doing is i have multiple processes i am pinning to different cores then when the cpus are running in parallel these processes will be scheduled on those individual processes so they can all run in parallel so you get a better benefit of creating multiple threads in a system so linux kernel provides a set of interfaces so unless os supports it you cannot have it but your hardware if you have a laptop you can actually do a ls cpu on your wsl linux platform and then this ls cpu will give you the information about whether your processor that you have in your laptop or a machine has how many cores how many threads it can run even within a core there can be multiple threads can be run so in that means a single core can run two different threads simultaneously so you have to look for that and then that should be available in your core for this entire software to run on your processor now the scheduler will now if suppose i have multiple cpus whatever we learned about scheduler you have to imagine that it is actually meant for one cpu this is cpu 0 now cpu 1 core or cpu i use it both uh, you know uh, synonymously so whenever i have a, a scheduler algorithm whatever is doing it is going to run on a specific cpu for a particular cpu so it has got a set of task maybe you know pin to this cpu maybe t1 t4 t5 whatever you are chosen to run on this cpu then it will be the scheduler will run and bring those threads to this cpu similarly there will be another scheduler running there will be another ready queue and those processes will come to this core here one so you can imagine that the scheduler is running individually for different cores that means you can actually it's not that only one process can be pinned to a cpu you can have multiple processes in the system or threads in your system and pin it to some thread uh, some cpu then they all run on them okay one at a time again imagine one cpu can run only one processor process at a time but when multiple cores are there you can run them in parallel Mal different processes or threads will be running on different cpus you have to imagine now that there there is no one single cpu you have a multi core processor in your system so the interfaces that gnu c library provides are similar to linux kernel interface now we are going to use this particular uh, type which is a bit set bit set is nothing but a stream of bits or a, maybe suppose if i say i have eight cores then i have bit 0 to b7 bit 0 will correspond to core 0 okay this will correspond to core 7 suppose i have eight core in my processor now this cpu set bit set will have a byte value but each bit corresponds to particular core suppose if i say i want t1 to run on core 1 and core 7 in that case what will i do the cpu set i will say this bit bit 1 i will make it 1 remaining things i will make it 0 and this i will make it 1 that means wherever whichever core i am setting it to 1 that particular core will be chosen for that particular thread so if i have chosen multiple core then what will happen is whenever this thread is ready and if core one is also free available or it can be you know some process is running it can be scheduled out or it is completing then i can put this t1 on this core one or i can put i can move the thread one to core seven that means i am bringing that particular process to run on that particular core seven okay so this bit set is actually helping me to choose the set of cores that i have to make the particular process run on them so it's a boolean type but we are compacting it and keeping it in a set of 
adjacent bits. You may have 60 core processor, then this length will be 60. The CPU set time, the type, okay. This type could be any length. We don't know what number of cores that you have in your CPU. In that case, in your processor. When I say processor means it includes multiple cores in them. And this uh, CPU set underscore T is a type. It's whose size depends on number of cores that you have in your processor, in your system, okay. Now, what is set affinity? Now, this is a particular function call which is being used in our code. I will show you the code. Before that, I will give you explanation. Now, suppose if I am have creating a thread, okay, create thread, okay, and then I have given a function, okay, I go into the thread function, okay, and inside the function, that particular thread is running, I call this library function. And then I pass the first parameter 0. That means the thread, suppose the thread 1 is running this code and it is executing this particular function. Passing a 0 means the current thread which is executing this system call needs to be tied to a particular core. Now, which core? I will pass the core ID here. Okay. I am actually setting the core ID in a variable. Okay. And then I will, this I am address of the core ID I am passing. And then saying that whatever I have set, suppose if I cut core 0, I have set it, then this process which is executing this function will be pinned to this value what is inside this core ID. Let me explain again. When this function is called, by a thread which is executing this, okay, will be pinned to a particular core ID which I am mentioning here. Core ID can be 0 to 7, suppose if I have 8 cores or I have only 4 cores, valid core IDs are 0 to 3. So, I can give any one of the values in the core ID variable and I am passing the address to it. It will be, a, it is not interested in the address but it is going to access the content of the core ID and then it is going to set it to this particular thread which is actually calling this function. Now, what is this size of? I told you that the CPU set T is a library, you know, uh, value which is a uh, type, okay. This core ID is of type CPU set T, okay. Let me explain again, okay. Maybe with the code, it will be clear to you. This CPU set is a type and this is the va variable which is of this type. So, I am passing the address. Now, this could be 1 byte length or it could be even uh, 60 bytes wide because if there are 60 cores, no, 60 bits wide, sorry. 1 byte means 8 bits. That means 8 cores are there, 8 bit wide or 60 bits wide, okay, because 60 cores are there. So, that length is dependent on the system. So, that's why I am passing the size of this type and then a variable of that type I am passing. I am not passing the actual variable because I don't know the size of the variable. So, I am passing the address. Address have, has to be same. The uh, size of address will be same. So, that's the reason address is passed and that address may be pointing either to a byte or maybe a, a 60 byte bits value. I am just giving some random number, maybe 64, okay. That will be known by size of operator. So, the function would know what is the length of this particular CPU set T. That's the reason you are sending an address and then followed by the type. So, any clarification you need, maybe we can discuss it in the class when we meet. So, sketch set affinity, set the CPU affinity mask of a thread and PID is the first parameter. If I pass a 0, it means the thread which is executing or a process which is executing this function is pin to this code. If I say non-zero value, then it should be a valid PID. So, some other process is telling, I want a particular PID process should be pinned to this code, okay. If that permission is there and it is a parent or child or they are related, then it can pin it to the particular code. But if it is not related processes, it, the OS will not allow you to pin it to some other code, okay. You should have a eligibility or permission to do it, okay. Right now, we are not going to pass a non-zero value, we are going to pass zero, that means a thread which is calling, a thread or a process which is calling this function is going to be pinned to the core ID which is set here. Now, as I told you, the CPU set T is a 
bit pattern bit pattern and i if i have set only one value that means it will be print to that only one core if i set multiple bits as one then it could be tied to multiple core that means what one of the cores i can os can choose to run that particular process on okay if i have multiple bits set if i set only one bit that means i am very much interested in that particular process running on only particular core so if i say one here and the rest of it i make it zero then i am interested in this process whatever is executing this particular uh, function should be run on only core zero because i am setting the bit zero as a one and rest of the bit i am setting it to zero that's what it means okay effectively we are choosing which core this particular process is allowed to be pinned to that means whenever that cpu is available this process will be run on it okay so pid is zero means this calling thread is considered now the linux system call tells a scheduler which cpus okay uh, is that process or that allowed to run cpus if you have multiple bits set otherwise if you set only one bit that means only one cpu or a core you are choosing for scheduling that particular thread on it the scheduler actually runs on each cpu so that's why i told you each cpu has a separate scheduler because you don't know which process is running on a cpu and when you did complete okay when will be the next process need to be scheduled i can give you an example analogy if you have a movie complex you have multiple screens in a in a mall screen 1 screen 2 screen 3 movies are running there okay what is the scheduling done when this movie ends a new show is starting for this screen that doesn't depend on the ending time of this particular screen because the movie length of this on screen this we may be different compared to this the interval of this will be different from this because if all the interval happens then your popcorn counter will be filled so what they do movie theater they run a different scheduler on different screens and make sure that the intervals are not overlapping at the same time even the uh, movie timings are also different why is it done so that you can actually move in people move out people comfortably that's one reason another one is you cannot depend on all the theater to you know start at the same time end at the same time because the movie execution no, sorry uh, uh, not execution time movie running time is not same on all the screens one may be longer on hindi movie english movie may be shorter so you can have multiple uh, shows can be scheduled here whereas if it is a longer movie you can have only less number of shows on the uh, screen so scheduler is different for different screens similarly the cpus are different then the processes running on the cpus they are different and they complete or they get blocked on different time and they are not dependent so you need to run a different scheduler for different cpus that's what is done in the processor okay so a processor that cpu ability must determine the set of cpus on which this process is eligible to run so on a multi process system system setting the cpu ability mask is important so that you can get the parallelism and better performance okay so what i am going to do now is going to show you two core demo core and then explain you how the whole thing is working okay um this particular demo core actually makes all the threads created i am creating t1 t2 t3 three threads i am creating this main thread is main uh, parent thread is also there i schedule all of them on core zero okay then what happens is i am doing some complex algorithm not complex algorithm something computationally intensive multiple times then it is going to take more time now if all the threads are to run on this core it is going to take more time for it to complete because i am going to make the main thread to wait for all of them to complete then what will happen is when you run it on one single core the execution time is going to be longer but in this core what i am going to do is i will run them all on four different cores because i am running a, a you know uh, the processor that i have is multiple multi cores are there four co cores are there which you know eight threads can be run so i have no issues in scheduling them on each of those cores so i am going to run them on all different cores then i will show you that the time taken for it will be much shorter than what it took for this particular demo core so that's uh, going to be the demo before we end this uh, discussion so let me show you the core quickly i want you to go through this code which will be which is already shared these are all you know uh, include the file you should have if you are using this this apis that i am telling you okay mm. 
this is uh, for the sleep function call and this you have to put it here to say I want to use this sked affinity which is part of the GNU library time is for measuring the time taken okay that I will function call also I am using in the code so compilation is this command is given uh, because I am going to create threads we are using the pthread library which is part of uh, you need to include it in the compilation now what I am doing is I am going to create three threads I am giving some number to each of the thread 1 2 3 which I am storing it in a array this number of max num child thread is 3 and I have numbers 1 2 3 so that I can specifically say this code no, the thread 1 will run on core 1 core 2 core 3 and uh, my main thread which is the main process will run on core 0 okay it's very all of them are going to run on four different cores now some data processing function which is nothing but some double operation because it is going to take more time and I am iterating for 50 500,000 time so it will take longer longer time I am just multiplying multiple times and then adding it and dividing it something okay it doesn't have any meaning okay just to keep this guy busy doing some processing using the floating point processor inside the CPU okay so uh, mostly it may not be coming to the memory it will be executing in the CPU itself because all of them will be in the cache okay so this is the processing which every thread is going to do okay don't worry about it it's just a random processing done now before coming to the thread function let us go to the main function what is it going to do I am creating an array of p thread t because I want to wait on this thread I need to get a thread id of all the threads that I am creating so I need to maintain it in an array so I am having this child thread id's array I am going to initialize them and then I have to measure the time how much time it takes if I schedule all of them on a single code and then the same code is taken and then I will schedule on different codes and then compare the time so for that I need to measure the time in that case I need to have a start time and end time time t is the built in time type time which is uh, defined in this uh, time dot h which I included here okay it says system uh, c library function or okay uh, now let me come here now what I am going I told you that this is a bit set type core id that means I can mention which bit I am interested in which core I am interested in now I cannot just set it directly okay it's not like a binary you don't know how to operate it so you have to use a macro cpu set whatever value you pass here will be set in say this variable which is declared here okay now the length of that depends on the system if I, my core is having 60 cores then this length will be 60 bits as i explained to you so to set a particular bit on it i need to set the value I can call multiple times to set different bits in that. So if I am interested in running this some process on multiple cores, then I will call it multiple times to set it. Now I am interested in making only the core 0 to be set. So maybe it may be a LSB, it will be set. Choose just the core 0 for the parent process. I am going to use this core ID for the parent process as well as for other children pro child process also. Now I told you that sked set affinity is a function call to say if it is zero this this main thread okay which is going to be executing this function should be scheduled on this particular cpu core zero so i am setting the cpu of interest in the variable core id using this macro and then passing that value into this function to effectively make this particular main thread to be pinned to core 0 ok so that is one thing I am doing now after I make sure that the main thread is pinned to core 0 successfully it comes here it prints the my PID the main thread's PID and then I am going to start the time I am going to count the time ok inside that what I do I am creating thread how many threads I am inside a for loop I am creating a thread that means I am going to in a loop I am going to create multiple threads how many threads three threads this is defined as three now every time I create a thread I want to store the thread ID because I want to later on wait for them so I am storing it in this array I index will give me 
no uh, first thread created id will be stored in the first location second will be in second so on this is the attribute which i am passing null i am passing the same child thread function which is there above i'll like come to that explain it later i am passing the same the child thread function for all the threads that i am creating i am creating three threads all of them are going to execute the same thread function and then i am going to pass a parameter now what is the parameter i am passing i am passing a parameter of child number array now child number array i have already initialized to 1 2 3 that means the first thread i am creating is going to get the value 1 okay address of that array which is in the inside that will be a value 1 when second thread is created it is the second entry in the child number array which will be value 2 so this thread function is passed along with the when i am creating a uh, different threads the each of the instances are going to get different parameter the first thread i am creating is going to get a parameter 1 as one in which is inside this particular array and it's not actually getting it it is getting the address of that in the element which is having a 1 so second thread will get 2 3 and third will be getting 3 why am i doing i am calling the thread function with a different parameter so that the th child thread function will know whether it is invoked for the first thread or second thread or third thread okay now imagine that everything went well child thread creation is done successfully then what i do i command main thread is going to wait for each of the threads in the same sequence okay it is actually waiting on the thread id which i have initialized it during the creation now it is going to wait for each of the threads to complete now each of the thread is going to do the data processing i told you okay they are going to take lot of time they are going to keep on doing this work blindly and they are going to be running on which core that i will come to that now so you know that the main thread is going to be running on core 0 okay this is what the value we set it for the 0 and then say the main thread is going to run on this now what happens when the thread is created imagine thread 1 is created first thread is created it will get a parameter which is an address of an element which is having a 1 which is an integer array so whatever i am getting is a void star i need to convert it to int star and access the value stored in that int star that means child number i am getting so first thread when it is calling the thread function it is going to have a value 1 now what i am doing is this value is here okay and though i am getting the value i am not using it now what i am doing is i am setting one to the core id so irrespective of whatever is the child number remember i am getting it but i will tell you the next program i am play i will be using it but in this program i am getting a child number but i am not using it for setting the core so that means core zero is used for the main thread which you saw here core zero is used for the main thread and core one is used for this child thread not only this one particular child thread all the three children are going to be tied to the same core one because the value one is passed return into the core id and then set affinity is saying whichever thread is executing this because zero is passed please set it to the core id which is set here that means thread 1 will come execute this function it will be set to the core 1 thread 2 will come with the parameter 2 it is copied here but it's not used i am setting 1 again so all the threads are going to be tied to the same core 1 that means what this main main processing which is ha happening down i am going to call this data processing 10000 time and inside 10000 i am calling 300000 time so you can imagine that each thread is busy doing something calling this data processing repeatedly then only to do a p thread exit so but all of them are running on the same core one that means one when one thread is running on core one other thread needs to wait then they will be time shared so it is going to take more time now when the each of the threads are taking more time to complete our friend main thread is waiting on for them to complete right p thread join so it is going to take more time for each other thread to complete its job and come and say that okay i have done so because of that if i i measure the start time here right then i measure after the all the threads have completed the job 
and all of them are joined that means main thread will come out and it will stamp the end time this is called time stamping this is how performance is measured within the program you measure the start time this is absolute time okay uh, that means it's a real time which is running okay in background hardware so this timer is running parallelly and it is measuring the time real time how much time it has taken and i find the dip time it's a which is a built in function and then i print it how much of seconds it has taken okay this is the code okay now let us compile this code run it and then i will while it is running i will explain you the code which is uh, making making uh, use of multiple codes okay now i want to demo one i want to compile project demo one dot c now i am using thread library so p thread i have to include library and compile it yes compilation is done i am going to run it demo one now is it going to run quickly no it is going to take lot of time because this particular program has to do each thread has to do how much work it has to call data processing 10000 time and data processing itself is not a small job it is 50000 time so this same function is being used multiple time actually to be frank i should have used uh, another command okay which i mentioned it earlier okay minus d underscore re entrant okay effectively because the same function is being used but it is safer here because it is using only the local variables so each function is having its own local variable so re entrant is not so essential but it's better to mention it while compilation so since i have not given it while uh, running uh, let me not uh, uh, update it but you it is better to be safer you can include that definition minus capital d underscore re entrant you can include it okay no problem uh, now i hope you understand this code and it is running now it is going to take lot of time for it to complete before it completes let us try to understand if i have a mechanism now i told you that i can actually each of the threads can be attached to different cores instead of all of them being assigned to the same core i am going to do it differently that is the core that demo 2 is talking about now rest of it is same okay everything is same even the you know execution of the function is same i have not modified anything only difference that i have done is i am using the child number that i am getting okay this is the difference in the demo 2 what i am doing is i got a child number now why not i based on the child number why not i choose a different core each thread will run on different cores remember they use the same code because process process is the area within which all the threads are running they use the same code they have their own stack they use the same data area of the main mother main thread parent process but they run on different cores parallelly okay memory sharing is fine as long as they are not contesting with each other in this case we are not actually modifying the same uh, data area because we are only having some local variables which is going to be unique for each of those processes and they are operating on them in fact we are not even worried about the result so no harm but in real life if you are using the same uh, database and you are running in parallel you have to take care of some mutual exclusion which we will be covering in the later part of the os course which is coming in the next week but right now you don't need to worry about it now i am planning to run each of the threads on different cores how do i do it based on the child number which is 1 or 2 or 3 you know that when i am creating the thread i passed different child numbers to it so they will be coming in with different numbers each of the thread but they are executing the same code no problem but they will take a different route in that case what i do is i set the value of the variable remember the core id variable is a local variable so they are unique for different they are separate their stack is different so there are multiple copies of core id each of the thread is having its own core id variable and i am setting them individually because child number will be different for different threads when it is coming in so core thread 1 will be set to core 1 now thread 2 is set to core 2 i have eight cores in my processor so i can freely allocate to multiple core 
third core is given to the third thread. Now what is happening? Each of the threads are going to run the same data processing function, but they are running on different cores. Then the schedulers which are there ready, you know, running for each other, you know, doing its job for each other the core, they will be scheduling them on different processes because uh, different CPUs, different cores. So they run in parallel. So it will run faster than the previous core that we saw. In the previous core, what we did, all of them, all the core, all the threads are scheduled to core 0 only, core 1 only. Main thread is different, but all the three threads are running on same core 1. So they, they take more time. I am saving the time by scheduling them on different cores. Let us see whether the function what we ran is completed. Now it is completed. Remember, this has taken 168 seconds. I will not disturb this. I will go to another window. Okay. Now where I am, I am in the same directory. So let us compile the other file, demo2 file, ecc minus o <coughs> demo2 project underscore demo2 dot c minus lp thread. Okay. I am not giving minus d pre entrant because it is not there in the uh, file. So I have compiled it. Now let me run this now. Okay. Demo2 code. Same piece of code is run. Remember, same data processing is done by all the threads. Okay. I have not changed this 50,000 or that 10,000 I have here. Okay. So what happens is after I set this uh, CPUs or uh, different values are chosen for core ID and each of the thread is going to execute set, set affinity. That means different values are passed to this function. So thread 1 will be set pinned to core 1. Thread 2 will be executing the same code but core ID value will be different because 2 is writing, written into it. So thread 2 will be scheduled or pinned to core 2. And thread 2 will be executing the same code, but it will have different values in core ID because it has come here and it will be pinned to core 3. And then it will come and execute this. Now what is happening is, right now, all the three different cores are busy. Main thread is nothing. It is waiting for all the other three threads to uh, complete. And core 1, core 2 and core 3 are busy running our code, the same piece of code, parallelly. They are all running parallel and they do the same job. Each of the thread is doing the same job like what the previous core did. Only difference between these two core is this guy, this core, this particular core did it on the same core. All the threads were made to run on the same core, core 1. Whereas here three different threads are there. They are run on three different cores. 1, 2, 3 and affinity is set to three different code. So if you go and see now what has happened to my uh, process which I started off, it is already done. That's a real surprise. You see here same piece of processing. One guy took 168 seconds. This did only in 71 seconds. It is it's not one third, it's half of it. It did maybe because of this particular CPU that I am running is not only running only our code. Remember, I am doing the recording, which is also being run on those cores. And I am having PPD, which is open. And then I have Ubuntu is sharing the code. Okay, please remember Windows and the Linux are sharing the same code. So you won't get the one third benefit like what you expect to have, but it's really a good improvement in that case if this you got it done the same job in half of the time compared to earlier so that is the advantage of having multiple cores not only having multiple cores will help you unless you know the method of pinning them to different cores you are not actually making use of the multiple cores that you have normally os will do it its, it's job but when you know that I have multiple threads which are very compute intensive, you can actually make use of this facility which is there in the Linux to schedule them on different cores and get the maximum benefit out of it. This is how you improve the performance. That is the reason why this particular exercise is being done and given to you 
so that when you go into machine learning or any other algorithms that you want to run in parallel, you can explore using it, optimizing it, making it run faster, then you get a better benefit and better performance in the system. So with this, I will end this lecture. We will catch up in the next part later. Bye-bye.